Okay, so we're going to talk about enter God's perfect plan for our lives. Uh, first thing is, God made our lives very precious. It's not our ability, it's God's ability. He makes our life very precious. That because of God, our life became precious. In Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are, are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. So it says here, All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So all our days ordained for me, that God has planned for me, were written in God's book before one of the days came to be, before I was born, that all, this, all these days ordained for me has been written in God's book in heaven. And how precious to me are your thoughts. So in the book is written all the precious thoughts of God toward us, that He has all these precious thoughts for us. Uh, that is written in a book that He wants to do wonderful things in our lives. Now, many Christians might say, how come my life is so messy? The lives of some Christians are messy not because God did not have a wonderful plan for their lives, but because they did not enter God's plan. They did not offer the body as a living sacrifice. They did not, uh, uh, that they did not turn away from the world that do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. So many Christians did not offer the body as a living sacrifice and they fall into sin and so they have all kinds of problems. It's not because God did not have a wonderful plan for them. God has a wonderful plan for each and single F, uh, Christian. It's just whether we enter the plan or not. So here is, it tells us that God is very precious. He sees that our life is, are precious and he has ability to plan wonderful things for our lives and he planned ahead already and he has all the provisions ready all the provisions ready um, so he he has all the provisions ready for us so that uh, our life will be blessed if we follow God our whole life will be blessed and so so God is wonderful. What He has planned for us is wonderful. That all the days have been written in His book and all the days have all His wonderful plan there. That God has put His wonderful plan uh, in, His, in our lives. Okay, and then everything belongs to God. That is, you know, because everything in the world belongs to God. So He can give to us according to our needs and according to how we follow God's plan. In Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. So the, the earth is the Lord's and everything that is in the world and the world and all who live in it belongs to God. So God can do anything in the world. He wants to bless the people. And then if we follow God's will, then His plan will come true in our life and He'll provide for us. He can give us what we need in order to carry out God's plan. So the most important thing is that we really love God and obey God and follow God totally. And then He will provide for us and bless our lives. First Chronicle 29.11 The power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. So the power and the glory, all the power, all the glory, the victory and majesty, all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. And yours is the kingdom, O Lord. Everything in the world belongs to God. 
and you and you are exalted as head over all he is exalted he is the head of all and both riches and honor come from you all the riches and all the honor come from God and you reign over everything in your hand is power and might so God is all the power and all the might in his hand it is to make great and to give strength to all he can make people great those who love him and follow him he'll make them great and he'll give them strength so when we follow God's plan when we love him and obey him and serve him we have nothing to fear because he has everything in the world everything belongs to him and he follows his promises he promises that he will give to those who love him things that the eyes can, have not seen ears have not heard and the human mind cannot think of so everything we uh, you know he he can give us the best the things that we cannot imagine so he is uh, he is very rich he's uh, he has everything in his hand and he has his promises that he has promised to give us according to how we follow him how we trust in him and how we follow him and then he will bless us accordingly and bless our whole life his desire is to bless our whole life he wants everyone to follow his plan and then be blessed okay now so we want to look at God's nature in every topic we talk about and God's grace so God's nature related to his perfect plan what nature does God have to have in order to have uh, now here I have to change this to that he can give us his perfect plan first Romans 12 12, 12 2 talks about the perfect will of God God has ability to plan perfect plans so he is a perfect planner he can plan the best things the most perfect thing God has ability to make his plan come true this perfect plan come true when we offer our bodies to God so he has the ability he is capable of making the plan God's plan come true when we follow him and offer our bodies as a living sacrifice to God and God has the ability to change our life so that we this uh, we desire his perfect plan so for Christians who love God he wants to dedicate the body as a living uh, the who offer them the body as a living sacrifice to God because God has worked in their lives so that they are willing to offer the body as a living sacrifice so it's it's God who changed us so that we have the desire to enter God's plan so he has a plan and then he changed people so that people wants to follow his plan and then God is rich and he has all the tra uh, resources necessary to make his perfect plan come true so he has all the resources he has all the money needed all the talents all the opportunities everything needed to make his plan come true the main thing is we follow God and his word we obey God and love God and serve God and then God will make his plan come true in our life so that is most wonderful about God that he has the one most wonderful plan he wants to plan wonderful things for us he has ability to make it come true he works in our hearts so that we want to follow God's plan so any anybody has a transformed strong spiritual life because of God's work it's God who works in our lives and then we submit to him and obey him and then our lives will be changed and will be blessed by God greatly and then God's grace related to his perfect plan so we want to look at what nature does God what grace does God give us so that uh, we can enter his perfect plan now first God prepares a perfect plan for us so he has planned a wonderful plan in our life in our lives and we can look back in our lives and find out how God has planned different wonderful things for our lives so when we look back in our lives we can see how he has planned different wonderful things for our lives now for myself I thank God that he has worked in my life that he gives me the this uh, uh, before I became a Christian God gave me a mind to search for uh, the living God I, I wonder if there is a God and when I heard that there is a God I was very excited I, you know when I heard that there is a God 
I, I said I want to know about him, I want to follow him. Automatically, when I know that there is a God, I automatically want to follow him. That is God putting his, his, uh, this desire in my heart. And then he sent the right person to uh, bring me to Christ who can answer my question about whether there are proofs that God is real. And then uh, God has prepared different opportunities and people to help us so that I can enter his plan. And God prepared uh, the way for me to study theology. And actually, I came from a very poor family. I have no way to, to you know, prepare myself to go to pay for myself to go to the seminary. But God prepared a way for me and He gives, gave me the best seminary so that I have this teaching of how, you know, that God's nature and grace would motivate us, that, uh, that we live in God's grace and so we can enjoy and relax in all this I came from my seminary. And then I expanded as I, after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I expand on it and I see how wonderful God is. So I hope that you all, we all see that God is a wonderful God. He wants to do wonderful things in our life. So He prepares a wonderful plan. So when we look at our lives and see how we were saved, how He has brought people to change our lives, how He has uh, helped us in different ways, then we can say, wow, God has a wonderful plan to bless me. Um... Okay, now, if you cannot hear me well, please go to, um, uh, please go to uh, Pastor Yip. There the sound would be better, okay? Please go to Pastor Yip. I, uh. Okay, now, he works in a heart so that we desire, maybe I'll unplug this. Okay. Now, now I hope the sound now is better. Okay, can you hear my voice? Is it clearer now? Please uh, respond to me, okay? Okay, and then he gives us a, now a two, a B. He works in our hearts so that we decide to follow his perfect plan. He changes our lukewarm hearts to become zealous. So he works in our heart to change our lives so that we become zealous for the Lord. And then so that we want to, to be zealous for the Lord. We want to love God and serve God. And he gives us provision. Okay. He gives us pro uh, provision, spiritual gift, and opportunities so that we can enter His perfect plan. Because we need provision uh, that He provides for us. And spiritual gifts and opportunities so that we can enter His perfect plan. So He prepared the perfect plan for us and He works in our lives so that our lives are transformed. And then He prepares for us opportunities and everything we need to enter His perfect plan so that we can become great people. You know, when we enter God's plan, we become great people. When we enter people's plan, we become mediocre people. We won't become great. But when we enter God's plan, we become great people. So that's very important. Why we want to enter God's plan? Why we want to obey and serve God and love God? Because when we serve God and love God and enter His perfect plan, then we enter the most perfect plan in our lives. Our life will become great and we'll keep going, we'll keep going higher and higher. So that's uh, from God that He has all these things planned for us. Be, uh, uh, before one of these came to be, He always, has already written our lives in His book. And then all His precious thought He already prepared for us. So you notice that when I talk about God, I always talk about how great He is how He has done everything for us. And then when we receive Him, now it's very important we talk about our responsibilities also. But I don't say uh, you must. I would say when we, when we trust in Him, obey Him and follow Him and follow the move of the Holy Spirit, then we enter God's plan. So when we, when we, we don't give pressure to people. People are not pressured to follow God. There is such a, there are so many wonderful blessings for us. When we enter God's plan, then our lives will become better and better, and our life will go become higher and higher. So those are wonderful promises. So why not? Why not? So we encourage people. We don't push people. We don't force people. So when we preach, we don't use words like you must or you have to. Uh, 
but we say when you enter God's plan, when you love Him and obey Him, wonderful things will begin to happen in your life. Do you want to enter God's plan? So it's an invitation. It's like when we have something nice, like if we have, you have a, a, a you know, have a, a delicious cake. You don't say you have to eat it. You say, do you want to try it? This is delicious. This is a delicious, tasty cake. Do you want to try it? So instead of saying you must, you must, we don't say you must, but you say, do you want to try it? This is wonderful. And, and we can say to people, you should, you should, because God is so good, you should. So we don't force people to obey God, but we tell them, when you obey God, you have all kinds of blessings that come to you. And God has a wonderful plan for your life. To encourage people that God has wonderful nature and God has wonderful grace to give to us. So when we preach, we always tell people how wonderful God is. So that people can sense our excitement for God. That when we are excited for God, when we are happy for God, then people will say, wow, you are excited for God, you are happy because of God. And then people can sense our joy from our voice, and then they want to enter God's plan. Okay, and then, now, but very often Christians still fail and sin, but how He often gives people a second chance to enter His perfect plan even after they fail. Now we have all failed in some way. I have failed in the past and now I don't want to fail anymore. I want to enter His perfect plan. I want to obey Him in every, every way I can because I know that is the best for my life. And any time I sin, there can be destruction. So I don't want to fall into any kind of sin. I want to obey Him as, as much as I can in every single way. But God still gives us a second chance. So this is His grace. Now, you might say, I don't know how to think of these ideas that you have. But basically it's like this. That God is something wonderful prepared for us. And then He works in our hearts so that we will ex accept His gift. And then He gives us opportunities. And then He will also, also give us a second chance. So this can be repeated for uh for different topics and then his perfect plan will great bring great rewards so these are some points that you can use for instance if I use joy okay uh, his grace related to joy he he has a plan that he wants us to live in joy he doesn't want Christians to live in in, in a sadness and depression he wants us to live in joy even Christians who suffer can live in joy and then He works in our heart so that we can have joy. And then He gives us uh, the provision and spiritual gift and opportunity so that we can have joys. He, he will provide for us ways that we can learn to be joyful, how we can serve God with joy. And then even when we fail, He still gives us a second chance to have joy and third chance and fourth chance. But I hope we all follow God and don't, don't fail so many times and then when we have joy in the Lord he will give us great reward so this this will motivate people and say wow I want to enter God's plan I hope you all say I want to enter God's plan and it's not super super difficult because it is God's will that we enter this plan God wants us to enter this plan he will just say to God I need you to help me I want you to help me please help me God will for sure help us and, when, and then we obey Him and love Him and trust Him and, and serve Him then He will help us to enter His plan step by step. Okay, and then why people cannot enter God's perfect plan? If God has a wonderful plan for us, why many people cannot enter God's plan? Because they don't think that God's plan is the best for them. They want money and success from the world. They want beautiful women or a rich husband. They want their own ways. And then it's because people didn't understand that God's plan is the best. People's plan have a lot of imperfections. Even Christians, when they plan, we have a lot of imperfections. We need to follow God's plan. So we need to submit to God and say, Lord, please help me to enter your perfect plan. And because these people love the world, 
they follow the world, they think that they just need to believe in Jesus and, and don't need to do anything else. So many Christians think that they just believe in Jesus and they don't have to do anything else. And there is a teaching, a wrong teaching. They say, okay, if you want to be saved, you repent and trust in Jesus as a Savior. And then if you want to get reward, then you obey God and serve God. But that is wrong. Because the Bible says, you know, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So only those who, who obey him, does the will of God the Father, can enter the kingdom of God. So when we are saved, we are saved by grace through faith, but when we are saved, we always will obey. That is the necessary fruit of salvation. And then when we obey Him, that shows that we have real faith and then we can have salvation. But if we don't have real faith, I mean, uh, when the faith is dead, then the person will not uh, obey. And even serving God is not optional. Because in Matthew 25, it says that the servant who buried the talent is cast out into the outer darkness. And then those who don't do the good things to Jesus' brothers will be cast into the fire prepare, the hellfire prepare for the devil and his angels. So the Bible says that it's necessary for us to serve God. But we should serve God with gladness. And then we invite people, God is so wonderful and when we serve God, He will always reward us. So it's wonderful to serve God. Why don't you start to serve God? Instead of pushing people, you have to serve God. Of course, they have to serve God, but we don't force people. We tell them, serving God is the best that can happen to you. And then many people forget about eternity. They think that, well, eternity is a long way from now. They don't want to think about eternity. They just want to think about now. They want to get uh, what they want to uh, get when they want to get now. Okay, then how is very important. Okay, the two most important parts of a message are, first, God's nature and grace. And then second, how? And the third is why some people don't cannot uh, follow God's plan or obey God or have joy. Why? Why? The reason why we talk about the why so that we can respond to the why. Okay, how to enter God's perfect plan? Believe that God wants us to enter His perfect plan and He will help us to do so. So we are confident that entering God's plan is not too hard. So believe that. God wants us to enter the plan. God wants us to, to enter the perfect plan which is the best for us. It's God who wants it to happen, so He will help us. So the first thing is say, yes, it's not too hard, it's not too far away. It's right here. When I start to obey Him and love Him and really rely on God, God is very happy. Immediately He starts to bless us. So I hope we'll all believe this when we have a close relationship with God, when we love God, when we obey God, and when we serve God, God is always very happy, even when we're not perfect. When we're not perfect, we ask Him to forgive us. But when we start to love God, say we say to the Lord, I don't know how to love you perfectly well, but please help me. And I want to love you. I want to honor you. I want to thank you. I want to appreciate you. Then God is already happy, and He will help us to love God more and more so we need to we trust in God and then God is very happy to bless us okay B stop thinking that our plans are perfect keep asking God for direction to enter his plan so don't think that what we plan is the best you know there are many parents they plan things for the children what school to go to and uh, uh, what other things uh, that they wanted those things to happen to the children and you know a lot of times this plan don't come true because we cannot and make these plans come true the most important thing is we help the children to follow God's will to love God help them to love God and obey God honor God and then they will say yes following God is best and then they will want to follow God's plan and then the life will go higher and higher now it doesn't mean we don't plan but when we plan, we ask for God's direction. So we ask God for direction to enter His plan. And then, okay, for instance, God says, uh, I want you to serve God. Then we, we do ask God, please help me. Where do I get the 
theological education necessary, how and where. And so we ask God to help us. And so we do plan, okay? If I want to go to study in a seminary in half a year, what do I have to do? And then I can ask God to help me in the process. But we are following God's direction. Instead of saying, okay, I, I, just, I just want to go to seminary, so I want to go. Instead of obeying God's guidance. So God has a, a plan for us all. And God's plan is different for each person. Not everyone, uh, God has not planned everyone to be pastors. Some are pastors, some are uh, uh, lay people, and some are, you know, they have a business or have some kind of work or a farmer or a housewife. Whatever it is, when we follow God's plan and obey Him, and whatever we do, even as a housewife, the housewife would uh, take good care of the family and put love in the family and help the family member to worship God, uh, to honor God together, then they are uh, following God's, God's plan as a housewife. Okay? Three, build up strong relationship with God and pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. So have a close relationship with God and then God will guide us. And then we listen to God's voice. God might give us a motivation to serve God. You know, for myself, after I was converted, within one year, I already <clears throat> have the desire to serve God. It came from God. And I had a desire, and God prepares the way for me. It did not come instant. It came years later. But God has a plan already. So pay attention to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit prompts Christians to repent and to obey God. When we get used to obeying His promptings, then we can hear Him more clearly to follow His plan. Now the first voice that all Christians hear from God is the voice to repent and trust in Jesus. That when we sin, we feel guilty. That is the voice of the Holy Spirit. As compared to when we were not saved, after we were, were saved, then we become very sensitive to sin. That is the voice of the Holy Spirit. So we pay attention to the voice and the Holy Spirit will guide us to repent and obey Him and follow Him and then we obey Him and follow Him. And when we hear the messages or read the Bible, the, uh, God also promised to follow Him. Like now when I'm talking about God's plan. So I hope God is working in your heart to say, yes, I want to enter God's plan. I want to enter His perfect will. So so God's will will come true in my life so how to enter God's plan believe that he wants to give us a perfect plan and stop thinking that our plans are perfect and ask God for direction and build up a strong relationship and respond to the Holy Spirit to guide us what to do and if the Holy Spirit you know some people say I don't know if uh, God, God has called me to serve God I would say this, if we continue to have this desire to serve God, then it has to come from God. If we continue to have the desire to serve God, then it has come from God, that we have this continual desire to follow God, uh, that it came from God Himself. Okay, D, we choose to obey God to follow His promptings. For instance, we choose to help other spirit people spiritually. So if God prompts us to help someone spiritually, then we obey. The more we do, the better we become. Then we become efficient in helping other people spiritually. So the more we help people spiritually, then the more efficient we become to help people spiritually. Then we ask God to open the way for us to help more people spiritually. Then God may open the way for us to bless more people. This is entering God's plan by obeying Him with the things we can do in our present situation. So in our present situation, what we can do to help other people, what we can do to pray for people, to help people spiritually, to pray for people. So we ask God to help us to do it right here, and then we start to serve God more and more, and then we will enter a higher and higher plan in the future. Then, uh, then that is how we enter God's plan perfect plan step by step to do what we can do right now and then ask God to guide us to do more and more and do better and better uh, for instance to help people to help more people and 
help people significantly and E then we can seek God's strategy to bless other people more efficiently and we seek strategies strategies to make the best use of our lives so when we has helped some people then we ask God for a strategy how can I help more people how can I motivate more people how can I make the best use of my life and whatever we do we don't ask for you know we don't just hope for money but we just say God will provide for me and I just do what God wants me to do and then he will provide for me so I don't have to I don't have to think of money you know it's it's not wrong for a person to serve God to receive money it's not wrong but we should not be seeking money ourselves 